So this is as virgin as it gets. Touch for the very first time. <laughs> Are you considering taking the plunge into FPV? Then this is probably going to be a really important video for you to watch. As I, as a complete rookie in FPV, will take you from this to this in less than two batteries. Tag along and follow my first adventure into the FPV world. <laughs> I know what that is. I am so late to the party. Uh, this time it took quite a while for DJI to respond to my request about reviewing the latest unit. Maybe it's because that I'm not really an FPV pilot. I'm a complete amateur for this, which would make this a perfect match for me. So let's just see what's inside this box. <laughs> the Avatar 2 with the goggles 3 and uh, the smart controller. Uh, there's also a set of anti fillers that will allow me to test that one out. Just see, we remove the green sticker here. Sweet. So now that's your proof that this is actually a new product. So let's see here. Just give you a short glimpse of what's going on. So, there's the bottom. This is the actual drone. That's the one that I'm most excited of seeing. How nice is that? Yeah, this is very improvised. So, this is the unit. Look at this. Nice little uh, cover here in the front. And uh, the battery slides in and out in the back like this. I am looking so much forward to try this out. Let's see what else in the box here. There are the goggles three. <laughs> Small antennas, the uh, flicky flicky antennas. I guess this is a power bank. Oh, so I can adjust the strap here, remove this uh, foam, and then they basically go. Like this, and they can't go up. So then there is uh, the battery hub, which is the one that I want to get my hands on. In this kit, there are three batteries included. So grab this one, put it in here. So that's the usual stuff. So I guess we need to charge these and uh, the three batteries before we continue the process. And this is the motion controller 3. So it would definitely be super scary to only have this one to operate the drone. <laughs> that would be super interesting. Maybe that's what it takes for me, like a complete amateur, to learn how to fly a FPV. So that's basically what we have in the back. I guess we have some additional stuff here, the usual stuff. Extra propellers, uh, charging cables, and uh, manuals, and all that stuff. That's kind of expected. This, uh, this is the Flymo Combo 3 battery bundle. And the back, this is something like this. Very roomy. That seems to be able to, yeah, where you can store everything very nicely. So I will put everything uh, um, onto a charger, and uh, I will get back to you. There are no charger included in the Flymo Combo. So I'm using uh, the charger that I got with the Air3 to charge everything here. Just with the power bank here, so like this. And let's take the goggles. And I would assume that we need to plug them in somewhere like this. So you see that they are charging too here on the side. So I don't know if this one needs to be charged. You would need three outlets to charge the full package. It probably needs to be charged as well. So now we're running out of <laughs> charging options. <laughs> I have my charger for my uh, yeah MacBook, and I will just plug that in somewhere. 
so I can get this one charged as well. So now everything is charging. Around two hours later, everything was fully charged and ready to be activated and explored. <laughs> so let's just see if I can do a test so I can see if the screen is being recorded as well. So test recording. Five seconds. They're surprisingly more comfortable than I had expected. <laughs> I'm still a little nervous of flying this for the first time. <laughs> it would be a shame to wreck it. So I think what we will do is we will go outside and then we will try just to get it to hover and maybe fly it a little bit around where there's no obstacles, just to see if I can make it work. And I must say that it is a little bit scary because this is the only thing that I have to control the Avatar 2 as it is right now. So hopefully the learning curve will not be too steep. Let's use the bag for the purpose. Start by adding the battery pack in here. This, I hope it's like this. <laughs> and the motion controller 3 goes in there. I take the goggles. I think, at least for now, I will use the protective foam here just to protect them. Fold down the antennas. Oops. And then put them nicely in here. Like this. And then the avatar that needs a screen protector here. I guess it's like this. So like this and then that one goes in so dji kindly sent me a set of uh, nd filters too uh, nd8 16 and 32 so we better bring those as well are you excited i am so now we are ready to go out and test this thing so let's get prepared i brought a landing pad i usually don't use those but uh, i thought yeah, I kind of would today. Uh, the other way. So then we have the drone here. Preparing everything. Removing the gimbal cover. Take out the the remote. Uh, yeah, the motion controller three and the goggles. Unfold the antennas. See, it's very nice. It has the battery here on the back. That's the back part of uh, yeah, the head mount. And there are these adjustments inside that can be adjusted through these knobs. There, that will help compensate things for me as a complete, uh, yeah, wide-eyed guy. <laughs> Also, it has a SD card, and I just tested this feature just before I went out here. There's an SD card slot here in the middle here. If you just plug in an SD card here, it would automatically record the UI of the drone once it's airborne. And the most beautiful part about that is that uh, it's an MP4 file, and it's in 1080p that is directly to be used when you plug in the SD card in your computer. So that is a really, really awesome feature. The screen recording inside the goggles only runs uh, while you're recording video. Something that I unfortunately learned after recording this video. <laughs> I keep postponing this because I'm actually a bit nervous <laughs> about flying this drone for the first time. So we are ready to do my first attempt as a FPV pilot. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, you know the parking lot where we are here right now? That is a, a public parking place. And uh, as the drone is still under embargo, not that long until it's uh, being released. I think it's, the, it's Monday now and it will be uh, available or shown to all of you on Thursday the 11th. Uh, so, but I still need to keep this a secret. And uh, as some of you bright have seen last time I went down here to do like a secret video, a whole motorcycle gang <laughs> arrived here on the parking lot. So let's not hope that we will run into this uh, today. I have very limited 
experienced flying FPV. So it's really, really ideal for you to follow along. As uh, I've not cheated or anything, I haven't had the drone airborne yet. I only did the activation and, uh, and uh, back in the office and tried out the screen recording and uh, all that stuff. But I never had it up flying uh, with the, the remote. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, so it'll be perfect for you if you just consider stepping into this hobby. Uh, to uh, yeah, follow along here and see uh, what, what actually happens because uh, I have a very crooked eyesight as some of you have seen in my videos I do a lot of stuff to prevent you from seeing that because it takes away focus from from the content but I have a, like a lazy eye and not, not equal eyesight so it'd be interesting to see if this can actually work for me uh, as, as a I can just show what I mean <laughs> Flying with these goggles and I only have the remote here, yeah, the remote controller or re motion controller 3 I think it's called and the goggles 3, uh, that would be very interesting for me. The only past experience I have is uh, that I've been flying indoors in my house with uh, a Beta FPV uh, kit which is basically also goggles and uh, a small tiny whoop and that was really really difficult. <laughs> but I think as we are getting used to with the DJI products, uh, they are making uh, stuff a lot easier for us uh, to, to start out. Let's see if we can get it airborne and maybe do a little uh, victory round here on uh, the square. I got a set of ND filters for the drone as well, but I'm not going to mess around with that right now. I, wanna, I want you to see the raw footage without any additional glass in front of the camera. And in case that you don't know why we're going to use ND fillers on your drone, I made a very comprehensive tutorial showing you with real life examples the difference of the different filter types that are available for drones. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. So we just start the drone now first. I don't know if there's any particular order to this. All three units are factory repaired and will find each other no matter which order that you power on the units. Man, this is so spooky <laughs> that I only have this one available for controlling it. A short press and a long press. There it was. Sometimes it takes a few tries to get it right. And you see here, see here, you see, there are these two cameras in the front of uh, the goggles. And uh, the smart part about that is that uh, this, if I tap three times on the side, I will actually get a vision of what's, yeah, in real life in my surroundings uh, so if, if anybody is stepping up to me i would be able to spot them even though i'm sitting here with my goggles on so that's super nice so you know one tap shows you the battery status so double tap you will get it up and go i don't know if i can carry um, i can wear my cap at the same time maybe i can maybe i can't so you can see it so, so if I tap here two times, see, now I can actually see what's going on. This is super practical, <laughs> even though it's a little bit... <laughs> so now I can see there's a garbage truck that <laughs> is passing here. Maybe that's a, that would be the test that would convince you that this is actually working. The video quality is maybe not the, yeah, maybe not the greatest. Note that the pass-through video feed of the goggles are not being included on the screen recording. And unfortunately, the screen recording does not pick up after you exit uh, the pass-through view, which I think DJI should implement. I don't know if this guy's coming over here. <laughs> you tend to get a little bit paranoid sometimes. You don't know about all these anti-drone people, but I guess they are just doing their work. Another advantage of me being able to use the goggles that way is that I don't have to pinch my eyes all the time when I'm out in the sun. I think I will just pack up the drone here just for a second, then we have to postpone the test a little bit because I would, they would likely, I don't know, if they would get over here and talk to me. You look so interesting, I'm going to ask you to ask you. Yes, I'm only me. No, I'm talking to my camera. With the inbuilt screen the healing for. Good day. Yeah, good day to die us. See, that was a very wise decision. I saw that one coming. <laughs> but okay, I'm also out here in the open. So, of course, 
it's super interesting for people to check out uh, what it is that I'm doing and what's going on. But it was super nice that I had this decoy that I could just uh, th yeah, throw up and show what's going on. <laughs> So the first task was to make the drone uh, take off, hover, and land it again. So make sure that your surroundings are clear. Yes, they are. So the first thing that we should do here is we should make it go airborne. See, I have this pointer. I don't know if it's recording this part, but I have this pointer. This is pretty nice. You can use this, uh, yeah, the motion controller 3. You can use that as a pointing device in uh, the graphics that's inside the goggles and it's put in beginner mode. I think that's probably a good idea. I can start the recording here on the side. I think there's a record button. So now it's recording a little bit of video here. It has internal storage of 46 gigabytes, I think, but I've mounted 128 gigabyte SD card. So the, the idea is that you start the engines by pressing this, the orange button here. <laughs> Hold back the lock button to take off. And then, so I hold down the lock button. So I land. <laughs> so after I completed a takeoff and landing successfully, it was time to move on to try and make my first flight. Hold down the lock button. So this tilts the gimbal up and down. Nothing happens here. So now it's flying. Uh, maybe we should just start some video recording here. We just want to see what's going on here. It's, it's a lot noisier. How do I get, get it to come back to me? Come back! So I guess I need to, maybe. I'll figure this out. I guess it's because I'm in beginner mode, but everything is so slow. See where it is? Where are you? So, let's just land. Hold down the button. <laughs> I was starting to kind of familiarize myself uh, with the motion controller, but I still found it a little bit difficult. I've shortened down that part because it's in beginner mode, so everything was happening so slow, and I don't want to bore you with that part. But it happened. All of that happened within the first uh, battery, within the first 20 minutes. Let's plug in a fresh battery. Grab one from the back. So, what I think we should do now is we should try and uh, switch it into, uh, yeah, away from beginner mode. I'm not really sure that this is, uh, <laughs> everything was going so slow that it was not very exciting. And then take them off if you don't wear them because it's getting it's getting hot in here. <laughs> Just take off all your clothes. I think it li the next line is, but uh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and then I decided to take it up a notch and pull it out of beginner mode and push it into normal mode to see if I could sort of get the hang of it. So let's go, let's go, let's go. Whew. Man, this is a hot, this is hot business. <laughs> Goggle compass interference. Maybe I just need to step out here. It's because I'm close to the car. Okay. So let's fire up some video here. So, now we have the real deal. Let's just get some attitude here. As far as I understand, what will save me if anything goes wrong. I don't know why it's, it's 
still look like this. Hey, hey! What would save me if anything goes wrong is that I have this orange button. Hey, look at this. Hey, look at this. I don't want to be cocky, but uh, I think it's actually uh, quite nice. Nice flying from me. Maybe we should measure the noise level. I brought the Mini 4 Pro. The noise comparison against the Mini 4 Pro is included in the end of this video. Ay, nay, 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 nay. <laughs> so what happens if I fly like I fly like a madman and then I let go? See, everything stops. That's nice. So I can go up here. Altitude. I, I, I guess I should be able to accelerate up. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe. Maybe at some point I will learn this. I know there's a lot of you that will say this is not real FPV. But uh, it does for sure feels and looks like FPV to me. But of course, the skills that you need to fly a real FPV drone where you don't, where you can't do it like this, and then everything stops, then it will simply drop to the ground. Um, requires a, a different set of skills. Hey, look at this. The weather is really nice. And I'm down here somewhere, so I can just flip this one. Hey, that's... That's what it's getting used to, that you need to sort of press the accelerator to be able to... Uh, yeah, so what's going on here now? So I can just tap the glasses here. Hmm? You see, what is going on? Tractor is coming. Let me go back. Uh, this is a nice feature that you can tap this. So, oh, I thought it was my head. I was doing this. So a little bit press on the, the accelerator button, not very much, just a slight tap. There's like a resistance when you press in. So if you do that, then you can turn the camera. You can basically also turn it up and down and it's not doing anything. Then if I press the accelerator button a little bit more, it will start to fly and then it will react accordingly to how the motion controller is being tilted. Actually, I'm getting the hang of it. I, I don't know. Yeah, let's say, let's see if I manage to crash it towards the end of the video. <laughs> but I'm actually getting the hang of it. it. It's not so intuitive in the beginning. So. Then dive. Whoa. You can hear the audio. It's crazy. So? So you can see there's a lot of options up here. There's uh, the brightness of the display. There's head tracking. I guess if it's, I enable that. Disable this, and I disable the head tracking. What would then happen? So now, when I turn my head, you can see the cat. Oh, let, let's just start some video recording. So if I turn my head, maybe I should just fly a little bit closer to me. So you can see what it is that I'm doing. So, and maybe, and then, so see, 
So now, see, the drone is actually following. I, ha I keep this completely steady. And then I press the lock button again, and then I go up here in the menu, and I disable this. Uh, this aqua stuff here is uh, really crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, press one more time on this, then uh, it's... Of course, it's a problem that it doesn't have uh, obstacle avoidance uh, in the front. That could cause a little bit of an issue. But imagine this is the first time that I'm flying an FPV drone. So what do you think? If, if I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> and, and the side bonus is that you're, you'll be getting uh, the possibility to use uh, the goggles and uh, the, uh, the controller. You can use that. Ooh. You can use that um, uh, with your Mini 4 Pro and your Air 3. I think that's kind of cool. I think that's super cool. So this is 60. The colors looks really, really nice in the goggles here. And I'm actually surprised I'm not more dizzy than uh, I am after doing this for just a short while. You know what's stupid? They've changed the rules. So I can't go beyond that tree here, according to the Danish law. They put in a safety zone around the castle for, for around uh, one kilometer in the center of the castle. It's so stupid. So I only have this uh, back part, back portion of, uh, of uh, yeah, the parking lot to do my flying. <laughs> it could be fun. I don't know if how much more battery we have, but let's just go settings. Camera, I do want to see, oh, go back, then I do want to go down and do maybe the, this one, especially when we're doing like crazy stuff. Yeah, and I don't want to wreck it now. I guess maybe there's a sport mode or something in here as well. I don't know. And I'm using rock steady technology, which is di digital stabilization. Hey, mano. Whoa. <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, should just, I don't know take a little uh, breather here before I have like a bunch of plastic scraps around me. But let, let's just see uh, this flippy flippy thingy if I'm up here. Easy acro. So now that one is enabled. No, it's not. Okay, maybe that's an actual limitation there we just stumbled into. We need to stop the recording before we do anything. Now, I'm not really comfortable about the other ones. 180 degree drift. I'm not really sure what that does. Watch out for part two of this first flight, which in this case would be a second flight, where I explore uh, using the Avata 2 in sport mode. I'm using the D-Log M, providing samples for that. And uh, I'm also exploring uh, all of the three uh, easy acro modes that is coming with this drone. So if you're not already a subscriber, then consider becoming one so you don't miss out on that video. So now when we had to test this, maybe maybe we should do a little bit of recording here so we could actually see what's going on. Whoa! You know if you slam it into your head, it will not stop. I'm just saying, Whoosh. just want to see how that looks. Let's replay it in slow motion.
You can actually test out uh, the easy acro modes by simply letting the drone hover and test it out completely safely. I didn't know that prior to this record. So low battery. Let's let's see what happens on low battery. And then we do like a sound test afterwards. Let's see. So. So. Okay. So it was actually about to land over there. Yes! <laughs> That was a crazy ride. So it's pretty clear that I couldn't figure out in the beginning uh, just by intuitively uh, messing around with this. But uh, when, once I started to get the hang of it, it was actually not that difficult uh, to fly it. Then fly it so you get like cinematic quality in and out of uh, yeah, buildings and all that stuff. That's of course a different uh, yeah, game to do that. But it's really a nice kit, this one. And I'm surprised uh, how um, comfortable these beeping goggles are. I'm surprised how comfortable they are to wear. Uh, even though that I have like a pretty bad eyesight. And I understand why they put in these uh, small cameras here in the front that will allow you to see outside. That's very handy actually, especially when I'm landing on maybe something like the, <laughs> the landing pad. It was nice to see that it was actually above the landing pad before I put it down. So, so far this has been a fantastic experience and uh, I got this uh, kit very, very late in the process. And this is the actual first flight that I'm doing with this unit, which will be yeah, similar to what you would uh, kind of experience uh, if you go out and do it the first time. I, I was solving a task for Drona DK inside Copenhagen. I was flying a little bit inside their store with the motion controller. So I have very, very limited experience with that one. At least I can say that I don't have any muscle memory that is worth mentioning <laughs> in relation to this. That's for sure. So this is like a virgin, like Madonna would have said. It's <laughs> Touch for the very first time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was really fun. I've been wanting to go into the FPV game for a long, long time, but uh, I've been basically holding a little bit back because it's a significant investment to do it. And um, I didn't feel that the flight time and the setup was there with the Avata 1, but I definitely have a good impression of this one as it is uh, right now. And the fact that you can use it together with some of your other products, at least the goggles and uh, the, yeah, this controller, that makes it a lot more attractive than, uh, than I originally thought. Of course, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that you should go out and buy this uh, right now, because as it's probably clear that DJI sent me this kit for free. So that's why I've just decided to share my experience with you how, uh, yeah, it sort of uh, went along when I was testing out the product for, for the first time. If you want to buy it or not, that's up to you. But in case that you decide so, I'm not leaving money on the table. So of course there are purchase links in the description below that will allow you to purchase uh, the product and at the same way support the channel. I will be pushing out a few videos to show you uh, more of the features of this one. I also need to get the hang of the last two Acro modes to sort of, uh, I just need to go back home and read what it is that they are doing. <laughs> <laughs> the flips, that was pretty easy to figure out. But I need to figure out what the, the slide and the, the 180 degree thing, what that is doing. I don't like that it's a slide because then it probably means that it would continue in one direction and uh, not stop when you let go of everything. So you need to be prepared for that. But if it is anywhere as easy as the flips, then uh, I think it will not be very difficult I think I'll do a separate video on the easy acros. I think that would be the easiest one. So many of you are probably asking, what about the noise? And uh, it's a little bit windy today, so it's difficult to do a real scientific test, but I brought my sound meter and let's just do like a really unscientific test just to give you an idea of the difference of the noise level of uh, yeah, these two drones. The Mini 4 Pro is kind of, the noise level is kind of equal to the rest of the pack of the mini series, so um, yeah. Let's put this up, let's launch it and just measure 
with the sound meter or what it sounds like. And when we're doing these tests, we normally do two things. We let it launch. And then we measure it and then we launch it to 10 meters and then we measure it again. 64 dBA. Then let's put it in 10 meters. 56, 57. And then hold it down. 73 and a lot more hiss sound. So it's 10 meters. Yeah, around 60. Let's just kill this. Not literally. <laughs> and the same with the goggles here because they are contributing to the noise, at least in close proximity. The background noise is around 38, 39. So the Avanza 2 is significantly more noisier than uh, the Mini 4 Pro. I guess we already knew that. And with a prop design like this, fast spinning props, it's not really a surprise. The flavor of the sound is definitely different. It's more hiss sounding in this one uh, than uh, the Mini 4 Pro. So you will not be able to sneak around with this one without getting noticed. You see the camera, that's a huge lens that's in front of it. Look at this. This is the same sensor that uh, you find in the Osmo uh, Action 4 which is uh, really, really cool. I think it's a 1 or 1.3 inch CMOS sensor. And uh, the, cool, the cool part about having a larger sensor compared to the previous Avatar is that the low light capabilities are much stronger on this one, at least on paper. I haven't tried it yet, but that's at least uh, the idea. And that's super cool when you're sipping in and out of uh, buildings with the different uh, light conditions that you have a camera that's actually capable of seeing in low light. It has like this very nice protection in the front. So that will hopefully save the camera in case that you crash it. Repairability, I'm not really sure how that would go down <laughs> if you crack one of these. But, 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 but maybe this part is some sort of a flight module. It seems it's with two screws. Maybe that one can be taken out and that will carry all the, yeah, sort of the electronics from the drone and make it easy to repair in case that you run into problems. It does not have sensors in the front. It only has rear uh, optical avoidance sensors. I guess they, those are also helping with the downward sensing and maybe a little bit to the sides. I don't know. Yeah, maybe not because you have these edges here. But uh, so you're not saved if you decide to ram in directly into something like I almost did into myself <laughs> just here a short while back. This was my first flight video with the DJI Avata and I managed to do it without anyone actually noticing me being here on the parking lot, even though I had the pleasure of showing my Mini 4 to a guy that was very interested in what I'm doing. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then uh, feel free uh, to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.